Well, hey there, native plant enthusiasts. This is Santino, Education Manager for Bowman's Wildflower Preserve, back at it with our next nature note, highlighting a wonderful native plant for your garden spaces. So today's native plant is an herbaceous perennial that can grow to be about three feet-ish or more in height. Um, it blooms from June through October with some lovely white flowers, um, prefers sunny, dry soils, and is really at home in the kind of rocky prairie open woodlands and fields style of habitat. In fact, those beautiful white delicate flowers give it the common name, our native baby's breath, but it should not be confused with this European invasive. Um, and its brilliant white flowers will bring a almost euphoric feeling to your garden space, but this feeling of euphoria should not be confused with the plant's genus. What is today's mysterious native plant? It's none other than Euphorbia corollata, or the flowering spurge. So as I mentioned, the flowering spurge is a member of the Euphorbia genus and should not be confused with the word Euphoria. And despite the similarities in appearance, the plant should also not be confused with the invasive baby's breath despite the common name being our native baby's breath. Um, the two have very little in common, save for their appearance at a distance. The baby's breath that we are all familiar with is actually native to Central and Eastern Europe. Um, and as I said, is classified as an invasive species here in North America. The Euphorbia genus it ha contains about 2,000 members, all of which share the characteristic of a poisonous latex sap and a unique floral structure. The group is widely cultivated as an ornamental, and the most recognizable you'd probably pick out during the holiday season is poinsettias. The common name spurge was derived from Middle English's esperge, which means to purge. And this is a result of the plant being used as a laxative, as again, because of their sap. The botanical name Euphorbia derives from the Greek physician's name Euphorbos, who happened to be physician to King Jubba II. He was a prolific Euphorbos was a prolific writer and described a plant now named Euphorbia obtufosilla. Um, Euphorbos's brother was actually physician to Augustus Caesar, and Augustus gave the gave his brother a um, a statue in his honor, and so King Jumba named the plant that Euphorbos described in his honor. In 1753. Linnaeus actually gave the name Euphorbos to the entire genus in honor of the physician's work. As I mentioned, flowering spurge is a lover of dry, open soils, and the plant itself is quite drought tolerant thanks to its taproot. We briefly just talked about taproots in our previous video on cup plant. I'll link that here for your enjoyment. Um, the flowers are visited by bees, wasps, butterflies, and flies. Some insects will feed on the leaves and stems, but mammals typically avoid it due to that toxic sap. If we look close at the leaf arrangement, we can see how distinct it truly is. Along the stem, they are alternate, then abruptly change to a whorl just below the flower. Now let's take a closer look at those flowers. Like all members of the genera, they have a unique flora head called a pseudanthia, or false flower. What appear to be white petals are actually bracts. These are modified leaves, and they serve a similar role to the flower's petals, but they aren't directly part of the flower. Now, of course, what are the role of a flower's petal? They are to serve as a sign to insect pollinators that the plant is open for business and encourage them to visit. If we take a closer look at the flowers, we'll see that they're remarkably simple and reduced. So reduced that the male flowers are only the stamen and the female flowers are only the pistil. If pollinated, female flowers will, cap or will form a capsule containing three seeds. The capsules will swell and eject their seeds, typically in the fall. Um, flowering spurge produces a latex sap that can be found in all parts of the plant. It's potent enough to cause contact dermatitis and permanent corneal damage if it gets into your eyes. For my chemistry enthusiast, it's specifically the diterpene esters in the sap that cause this reaction. Continuing on with the rich medical history of flowering spurge, members of the group Euphorbia are still being looked at for a variety of medical treatments. 
flowering spurge itself, uh, specifically being researched for dropsy, or now it's more commonly known as an edema or fluid retention under the skin. Now, I briefly mentioned the great wildlife value that flowering spurge has um, for, again, our birds and insect pollinators and the like, but it's not just pollination, pollen and nectar. Um, flowering spurge also is a host plant for a variety of our native butterfly and moth species. And this includes the hawk moth sphinx, io, great leopard, and many, many more. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with what a host plant is, uh, think about monarchs and milkweed, right? We all know that monarchs need milkweed to survive, but many uh, butterfly and moth species rely on various native plants to host their caterpillars, their babies. And so it's those baby caterpillars that are relying on plants, much like flowering spurge, in order to survive. All right, friends, that just about wraps it up for me today, along with the flowering spurge and all the lovely pollinators who are buzzing about. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did and want more of it, please be sure to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and comment down below. Are you going to be adding flowering spurge to your own garden space? Um, all of your interactions are a great way to help with the preserve spread the message of the importance of native plants to all life on our planet. Um, and until next time, please keep on experiencing what's natural and learn what's native. Take care.